MCP has become the hottest topic in the AI community. And in today's video, we'll break down the term MCP. We'll talk about its benefits and architecture, touch upon security concerns, and go over a few use cases to show you how you can utilize it in the real world. Hello, and welcome to MailTrap Videos, where we explore the world of emails. Let's start things off by deciphering the MCP abbreviation. MCP, or Model Context Protocol, is a new protocol that creates a secure standard for connecting AI models to other applications and even to other AI models. It's so much of a standard that even official MCP documentation compares it to a USB-C port, but in a good way. Much like how a USB-C port connects different devices, MCP connects AI models with data sources and tools. Before MCPs, one had to rely on custom configurations to allow existing large language models like ChatGPT, Cursor, or Claude to access data that wasn't part of their training dataset. And even if those approaches were successful, because they often weren't, you still had to write custom code for each third-party data source or tool to give LLMs the context. The prompt logic and the method for accessing data were also inconsistent between different models. Right now, MCP simplifies that process significantly. You can install Claude desktop, IDEs, or custom chatbots. You can edit the configuration to use your preferred MCP servers and execute the desired actions with a prompt. Simply put, you can connect models like Claude with contexts like your Slack database, for example and you can allow the model to access information and perform actions in your database, sending messages, managing channels, or accessing workspace history. One of the key components of MCP is context, a structured memory that allows the MCP client and server to understand what you want to do. This way, MCP makes it easier to retrieve and maintain context across different sessions, and it allows AI agents to learn from past interactions, adapt to user preferences, and unify contexts. MCP gets context through resources, prompts, and tools. Resources are sources like a knowledge base, a database, a presentation, or even a user profile. Basically, any information that large language models would need to know in order to give informed responses. Prompts are reusable templates and workflows that provide instructions as context, and they guide the large language models on how they should process and respond to information consistently. A prompt can be something like this. Tools allow large language models to interact with external systems and perform actions. By doing so, they provide capability contexts, and they extend what the large language models can do beyond generating text. A simple calendar scheduler tool may look something like this. In short, resources tell the LLM what it needs to know, prompts tell the LLM how it should approach the task, and tools tell the LLM what actions it might take. MCP has a client-server architecture that consists of hosts, clients, servers, local data sources, and remote services. Hosts are large language models like Claude Desktop that initiate the connection and want to access the data through MCP servers. Clients work inside the host application and are responsible for establishing and managing connections with MCP servers. A host application creates and manages multiple clients, and each client has a one-on-one -on -one relationship with a specific server. Now, the MCP servers provide the clients the context, tools, and prompts we talked about earlier. A local data source can be a database, your device's files, or basically any source that MCP servers can access for context. And remote services are external systems that exist outside your local environment, typically accessed over the internet. MCP servers can be designed to access remote services for context. Let's talk about security. MCP incorporates several security features, such as authentication mechanisms to verify that clients and servers are who they claim to be, authorization controls that determine which clients can access specific resources or use particular tools. They do this by allowing servers to implement permissions. And data isolation to separate different contexts and more importantly, different users to prevent information leakage between sessions. However, its overall security 
still depends on proper implementation and deployment. Considering that, MCPs are still vulnerable to some attacks. Tool poisoning attacks, for example, during which attackers hide malicious instructions inside the instructions of the MCP tool. This makes the instructions invisible to the user, but accessible by the AI. Remote code execution through command injection, which allows attackers to execute malicious code through your client. Cross-server tool shadowing, through which a malicious server can override a legitimate one or intercept calls made to it. And the possibility of losing your data if something goes wrong, made plausible by allowing the MCP to access and make changes to your database or client data even. This isn't an attack in itself, but it's worth mentioning as a potential consequence of one. As of now, MCP doesn't have context encryption and doesn't provide a way to verify if the MCP client or server is indeed legitimate. So, when choosing your next MCP server and client, do make sure it's from a source you know and trust. And now, the fun stuff. Let's look at some use cases. MCPs can help with building and sending emails via a prompt, retrieving, searching, analyzing, deleting, and even replying to emails, creating hyper-personalized campaigns through better access to and analysis of your data, analyzing email performance from different data sources, or creating and managing contact lists. To show you the hands-on workings of MCP, let's take MailTrap MCP as an example. It allows you to integrate email sending into Claude Desktop and send emails with a prompt. To get started, install Node.js and Claude Desktop if you don't have them already. Inside Claude Desktop, navigate to Settings and go to the Developer tab. Click Edit Config and open the configuration file. Alternatively, you can just run this command to open the configuration file. Open the MailTrap MCP GitHub page, copy the configuration and paste it into your local configuration file. Edit the configuration, adding your MailTrap API token and a sender email address. Use an address with a verified sending domain in MailTrap so you can actually send the emails. Save the file and restart Claude Desktop. After a successful connection, you'll see the MCP tools inside Claude Desktop. Now, we can send emails with a prompt. Let's try it out. I'll use this simple prompt and hit enter. You'll be prompted to allow MailTrap access. Click allow for this chat or allow once. As you can see, Claude is sending the email, but let's check the inbox just to make sure. Ah, the email has arrived. With MailTrap MCP, you could ask Claude Desktop to create an email copy based on your conversation and send it for approval with a prompt or send routine emails without switching between tabs or leaving your chatbot. It also provides an easy way to connect AI models with an email sending infrastructure if you're building an AI agent. All right, that's about it for MCP and its basic workings. If you found this video interesting, you may also want to watch our other tutorials on AI. For example, we have a comprehensive overview of AI and email security. So if you'll want to check that one out, I'll see you there.